What up, what up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today on Fitness Tech Reviews, we have the new Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. So when this guy first got announced, I thought it looked relatively ugly to be perfectly honest, but it has grown on me a little bit. But let's go ahead and get into its specs, its fitness and sleep tracking, and what are the differences from the previous Galaxy Watch 4 that I have here. And really, is it gonna be best for you? But let's go ahead and get right into it. Also, I did buy a bunch of different bands to see which one was my favorite. I'll be going to that later in the video. So this is Samsung's flagship device. Last year, it was the 4 Classic. This year, it is the 5 Pro. It is coming in at $450, so it is not a cheap band. Going into the screen, it is a Super AMOLED display that is very bright, so underneath sunlight, you will not have a problem actually reading it. It is 1.4 inches, and it's kind of underlaid underneath this little bezel. Talking about the bezel, they took away the previous rotating bezel, and they use this more digital bezel. It's not that bad. I'll go into it in the user interface later in the video, but it really isn't as bad as people are saying. It does have a high pixel density at 321, so it's very clear, and it also has a sapphire crystal on top that says it's two times more durable than last year's. So a couple people, especially when they had the previous Galaxy Watch, this glass right here on the edge is a little bit easier to scuff and stuff like that. But on the Galaxy Watch 4, I really didn't have any issues, but that was also underlaid underneath the rotating bezel. So it is stronger than last year, but I really didn't have any issues. But I mean, if you're like rock climbing or doing something that's a little bit more dangerous like hiking, this would definitely be a little bit better of a peace of mind. And of course, it does always have the always on option display as well, but that will kill battery life. Talking about battery life, this was one of the reasons I was most interested in the new band. So it comes in at 590 milliamp hours, where the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic came in at 361 milliamp hours. With my regular testing, I saw a decent amount of battery life improvement than last year's. I got through a full day without any issues. With my previous one, I did have some issues, but I do have different use case as I am training a lot of clients and using music, and it would actually drain battery when you are using music, which is very annoying. I wish Samsung can fix that but its biggest game changer is gonna be its fast charging. So you do get a new 10 watt charger in the box, but it comes with a USB-C type connection, so you will need a USB-C brick. If you don't have one at home, you will need to buy one. Everybody else just has the regular USBs at home with the power brick. This is the old five watt charger and it is compatible with the two, but you really don't see the difference when you are plugging it in, but that 10% goes a long way. So I went to the bathroom at 57% battery life and I came back after that and a shower at 88 percent on the batteries so that 10 watt battery charging goes a long way to help you mitigate your battery loss throughout the day and also I went on a 5k run I started about 99 percent and I finished that 5k run at 94 percent I turned off Bluetooth so I was using the GPS on the watch itself but we'll get into the fitness metrics a little bit later in the video so battery life is much better than the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic but at the end of the day is it one of those watches that you wear perpetually and not have a problem yes and no if you are mitigating with a lot of charging throughout the day it's not the biggest of deals but if you're not near a charger you will need to charge this every time before you go to bed it does have an ip68 water resistance and it does have swim tracking that does great and it tracks your laps as well it's compatible with all 20 millimeter bands this is my old galaxy 4 watch band and it's going to be able to be compatible with the 5 as well it is ecg certified and you also get a bai sensor as well both of these things are behind a Samsung phone. So you will need to have a Samsung phone to get your body composition and ECG and blood pressure. But I am in the US and we do not have blood pressure on the watch currently. Going into the ECG is very easy to get into. It takes about 20 seconds and really it only detects AFib that says it does not detect heart attacks and it keeps reminding you throughout. And talking about its BIA analysis, its body fat percentage analysis, I'm very impressed by it. So I'm currently at 18 to 19% body fat percentage currently, and I've used a ton of different smart scales, and they never seem to work. I probably could pull out five of these boxes, and they're putting me at around 25, 30, 33% body fat. This watch got me in at 23% body fat. Yes, that's not where I'm actually at, but it's more accurate than any of those smart scales. So I'm very impressed by it, and it's something you could probably use to track your progress. It has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, it has its heart rate monitor, it has a body temperature, 
temperature thermometer on there currently. The biggest thing with that, it is its newest sensor on the actual band. But just think about it real quick. If you're going to bed, which it's usually tracking for sleep tracking, if you are under covers, of course, your arm is going to be warmer than it typically would be. And same thing, like if it was colder outside, it'll be colder than it typically would be. So this body temperature sensor really isn't the most important thing in the world. I think it's just one of those things you can check off a list, but I really wouldn't put too much emphasis on it. It does also have NFC payment through Samsung Pay or Google Pay. Talking about that, you can turn off Bigsby this year, which is great. Bigsby really isn't the best assistant in the world, and you could use Google Assistant instead, which is great. You just have to go through a couple settings, but you take Bigsby away. Thank you, Samsung. It is coming in with Bluetooth 5.2, so it's the most up-to-date Bluetooth version, and it has GPS with GLONASS, Galileo, and BDS as well, so it's fairly accurate as far as the GPS. GPS concern. We'll get into that in the fitness tracking. So it is using Android Wear 3.5 with the One UI on top of it as a little bit of a skin. Sadly, it's using last year's processor, the Exynos 920. So that's a little disappointed that didn't come out with a new one. Qualcomm has a new chip that's coming out soon. That's going to be in a couple new Android Wear ones. There really isn't much competition when it comes to Android Wear currently, but hopefully that's going to be changing soon, especially with the new Pixel Watch coming out. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel, hit that notification bell so I will definitely be getting my hands on that Pixel Watch as soon as it comes out. It does have some internal storage, 16 gigabytes, so if you do want to download some apps, so if you do have Spotify Premium, you're able to download your playlist onto it, or you just put some songs onto it if you need to, if you need to keep your phone at home and you still want to check things out with a Bluetooth headset. And of course it does have a speaker and it has a microphone and taking calls on it is actually very convenient. I typically don't get too many complications with it. They kind of just think you're on speakerphone, but the quality is very good. So let's go ahead and get into the fitness and sleep tracking. First thing is its newest feature of the track back. So if you're going on hikes and stuff like that and using the GPS on the watch, it can track you back to the way you came. I didn't test it myself, uh, but you can also import GPX files. So if you have a trail that you would like to use, you can import it into the app on your phone and then you can put it onto your watch and it can go through that track and direct you throughout. So it's just a great way to build a community and see how other people's times are and stuff like that, so it's a great addition. When I'm going through my fitness and my sleep tracking, I want you to check out Quantified Sciences video. He goes into way more in depth than I can do, so I'll be linking his review down below. It is just on the regular Samsung Galaxy Watch 5, but it is a great review. So you do have to go into the Samsung Health app to get into everything, and then this is kind of the basis of how everything is built in. You can put in your sleep, water, stuff like that, and your stress. But when you go into exercises right here, here. I did a little over a 5k run. I need to go over 25 minutes so I could track my VO2 max. That is one of the benefits. You have the map right here and a lot of great information on your run, including that heart rate. Heart rate did great. I'm going to check out my whoop right over here as well. And heart rate did great on my run, but it also checks out your cadence, your elevation. I didn't see was that accurate as I kind of started and stopped at about the same spot. So the elevation should have been around the same, which was a little weird. Uh, but that's pretty much it. And then of course you have your pace as well, which was very accurate. There was a little bit of bends here and there. So when I'm going into the map itself, you can see it kind of bounces around. I stayed on the same side of the road both times. So there was a little bit of discrepancy and I saw it when I had to check down my pace every so often, but in general it works great. But if you are connecting it with your phone, it will be even more accurate. And right here you have all your heart rate zones and the percent of the time you spent in those heart rate zones, how your heart rate actually recovered, your split times, and how you ran asymmetric contact time, flight time, and you can go into details and in all these things to work on your running, which is pretty great. And then the VO2 max, which is interesting. I'm fair when it comes to the top 45% of people in my age range. I guess that's about right. I don't run a lot. I really don't. So I'm not that upset. It goes with a sweat loss, which is great. And then a lot more metrics that you can go through. And then I did another workout where it was a little bit more high intensity and there was a little bit more wrist flexion. And that's where I saw a little bit more of discrepancy within it. So this is a heavier watch. It doesn't feel like it's flapping around, but since it is a tad bit heavier than the Galaxy Watch 5, it will actually move around a little bit more. So it will 
lose contact, especially with a lot of wrist flexion. I was a little disappointed by the fabric band. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit more stretchy, kind of like the Whoop is, so it could kind of be a little bit more dynamic with how it's on your skin. But since these are not very flexible, it kind of just mushes into your skin, and that's where you're going to lose that contact. But overall, the heart rate does great in general as far as your tracking is concerned. Now let's go into our sleep tracking. So you'll be jumping down here to sleep and it gives you some oxygen and stuff like that and snoring. So last night I got eight and a half hours of sleep, which is pretty darn accurate. And you have your entire sleep chart here with all your sleep stages. Again, I got my whoop over here to kind of give you a little idea. I was awake a little bit more with my whoop. So that was a little disappointing and it looks like I lost a little bit of time there. But also you can get alerted if your blood oxygen and dips a little bit. Uh, not the best when that's concerned, uh, but also you get some snore detection. I didn't get any snores that particular day. So I go to the day before and I was in bed for about nine hours, which is pretty uh, accurate to what I was. I was awake for a fair amount of that time. You got your REM, your light, and your deep. I got my whoop right over here to give you guys a great way to go about it. Uh, snoring. I'm, I'm a little disappointed didn't check any snoring. Maybe I actually didn't snore this day, but typically I do. And then of course you can kind of bounce around from there, go into the day before. And this was definitely a lot more accurate. It was a smaller sleep time for me, but it was a lot more accurate. Oh, and it actually said I was snoring for 23 minutes. And you can actually check out the audio on that as well if you would like. So that's always interesting if your partner says you don't snore and you got the receipts right here if you do or you don't. So overall, the fitness and sleep tracking on this device are great. Again, check out Quantified Scientist for the best review possible. And as far as the bands are concerned, this is the athletic band. So if you are looking to buy it, this is probably my favorite as it does get to breathe a little bit more. Even though I was very happy with the band itself, it is a magnetic band that you get built in that you can get nice and tight and it's easy to put on and off. Uh, the fabric band, this was also, I think 35, 40 bucks. You can get any of these fabric bands. I was expecting it to be a little bit more elastic and it was not, but you can get these fabric bands a lot cheaper. I'll link one down below, especially the one I always use on my Galaxy Watch 4. So what are my overall thoughts and recommendations with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro? This is a great watch with some really good battery life considering the previous watches, but really I can only recommend it to those of you who are going on like rock climbing and need that extra protection, or if you're going on hiking, or if you are looking for a watch and are able to charge every so often to get some sleep tracking in, you can get some sleep tracking in with that 10 watt fast charging. I cannot say that about the Galaxy Watch 4. You need to charge this every night so the sleep tracking didn't even really matter. Where you can actually get some decent sleep tracking out of this watch and get some great battery life throughout the day. But just remember, you probably will need to charge it every so often during showers, maybe going to the bathroom. Heck, you can even charge it in the car if you need to. But at the end of the day, if any of those things aren't what you're looking for, just looking for a smartwatch with some good fitness tracking, I would probably go with the regular five. This Galaxy Watch 5 is a great band, has pretty much the same exact sensors the Pro does. The only thing it doesn't have is the actual like track back features, but who knows, that can be up in an update as well. If you are coming from the Galaxy Watch 4 and are looking to upgrade to the 5, I'd say wait on it a little bit. I mean, I loved the rotating bezel. My 15 month old daughter actually loved it as well. And when I put this on, she kept trying to spin it and she couldn't. That was actually kind of funny, but I am a little disappointed. But overall, the digital bezel isn't that bad as I typically only use this rotating bezel as more as a fidget thing than anything else. Well, hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please smash that like button. If it was really helpful, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so if you want the first ones to know when my newest video comes out. I'll be linking all these bands down below. It's going to shoot you to Amazon. And if you purchase through that link, a little bit of that purchase is going to help me grow my channel. But as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and above all, stay positive. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.